Right, I'm just going to go through Lambeth in context, um, the typical kind of inner London authority, deprivation and all that. Uh, the risks we face in Lambeth, um, the issues I perceive from above ground, solutions and what we're currently doing. Um, so here we go, headline figures. Thankfully, people who were doing predictions all managed to do it by 2025, so I've got comparable data. The sewage increasing is for central London, not just Lambeth. Um, so going forward, we've got a lot of pressures on a very dense urban environment. <clears throat> We have 15% of our land use is highways, which um, again gives a lot of opportunity. Uh, a massive land use is that gardens, and it's how we, moving forward, encourage that and keep that and get rid of the uh, urban creep. Thankfully, we have no natural water courses, so uh, we have no consenting issues, and we have no significant assets, though we believe the uh, Albert Embankment outside MI6 is ours, but. <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> they won't kind of tell us. Um, our flood risks, as you can see, we pretty much suffer from everything. Uh, thankfully, most of it's EA problem and Thames waters. Uh, we have 14 critical drainage areas, and that's linked with uh, neighbouring boroughs, Wandsworth, Southwark and Croydon. Um, that figure of the 49,000 properties, that's based on the Drain London modelling and the, the map for surface water figure. <coughs> And it, it, it's a rough estimate, the numbers go down and, and up, but it's, for politicians it's a nice figure to throw at them, 37% of our housing is potentially at risk. And according to the added burdens, we've got 1% of national flood risk. So the problems, we can blame our friends Thames Water for uh, combined sewers, the design standard 1 in 15, when it was built 100 years ago, fine, not now. And obviously with the increase, there's going to be a problem. And I like to call it the free wise monkey approach. As far as we're concerned, there's this little hole in our back garden and it just goes down there. We don't speak of it, we don't see it, and we don't hear of it. So it's kind of like, so changing that culture and, and that acceptance is going to be interesting. Um, lots of front gardens, October 2008. Has that made a difference? I'm not sure from what I've seen, and it's just my own opinion, I don't think there is any difference with what came in in 2008, and again, it's how we uh, take that forward. The biggest crime in the 1980s in London, the removal of grass verges. It's cheaper, concrete, asphalt, it's cheaper to maintain, honestly, Gov. 30 years down the line, I'd love to see some comparisons, but unfortunately, records don't go back that far. Um, and also, it'd be interesting to see what the insurance claims are on these new camp concrete verges were or are. Traffic calming. This is. I've, I've put this in for a reason. It's basically we were set a target by the last administration to reduce traffic accidents, and across the UK we achieved it massively, and it was a very good result. And we put in these wonderful physical measures, vertical deflection tables, and all sorts. But a backfall or a fault which wasn't really fault, wasn't taken into consideration, and with the funding, was the drainage. Now, I know of a table where I have five catch pits linked to one gully. So you can imagine what happens when it rains. It's a lovely water feature. Um, we also have a junction table, which has got a catch pit connected to a gully just up the road. Problem is, it's on a hill. And as we know, water doesn't travel uphill. So it, it's, it's about trying to think these things through in the first instance and, and take that into consideration. Enforcement, again, another one of my little bugbears is we don't chase builders or people chucking cement and other stuff down gullies. We end up paying for it. It's an extremely expensive uh, repair. Now, efficiencies, brilliant. We're in austere times. We've got to make contract efficiencies. Our partners are making us wonderful offers. Um, we don't need a monitoring officer. We can, we can do it for you. 50 grand a year saved over five years, quarter of a million, brilliant. Five years down the line, we're getting a lot of jam tops and non-running gullies. I just wonder why that is. Um, so somewhere along the line, although we've made an efficiency on the contract, are we still paying for it further down the line? Um, the Flood and Water Management Act places a, a big thing on um, cooperation. And this is a wonderful quote from some correspondence I found um, about working together. All right, it's a little bit curt. 
Unfortunately, this was a letter written in 1911 um, <laughs> between the London County Council to our borough engineer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the last flooding incident was 2004. Uh, it's one of the schemes we're kind of looking at in, with Southwark as well. Um, so solution, SUDS, obviously green infrastructure. Design is critical. In CDM, we've got to consider design for maintenance and, and other issues. Uh, again, on the highway, we should do it. So if it's traffic calming, cycle lanes, we should consider the drainage aspect and what opportunities there are. Um, maintenance, obviously, ease of maintenance. Let's not go for expensive monoliths. Let's try and make it as easy as possible. And enforcement. Enforcement is very easy, I think. You can do positive enforcement. We all give licenses out to builders. Just put it on there. Damage on your gullies, your fault. Put the onus on them to protect, not for you to prove. Um, so here we go. Five sub schemes in progress, design or, or be in progress at the moment. On the right hand side is who's funded or where we got the funding from. So the top two, Brockwell and Ruskin, are EA Thames Regional Flood Coastal Committee funding. We're not sure if it's FTG, like, there's money there. Uh, three and four is GLA tier three, which is Drain London. There's some funding available from there. The DEFRA is the DEFRA added burdens funding. At Lambeth, we've made a conscious decision to spend just over 50% of that funding year on year on physical measures uh, on the ground. And the PRN is Principal Road Network, which is funded via TFL for RA roads. So that's where those funding streams come from. So we move on to Brockwell Park, lovely park in Hearn Hill. In the bottom left-hand corner where we're always stationed is this Hearn Hill. Um, and the line along here is where the hill shifts down towards the road there, Dulwich Road, which is what the uh, letter was in 1911 yeah. discussing. Um, so we've lost natural ponds. So obviously the Lido is there, it was a natural pond, but that's gone. Obviously that capacity's gone. There was two other ponds along that frontage of uh, Dulwich Road as well. The park is a very heavily used park. It's, um, it's amazing. Went up in there in January for a meeting and there's people everywhere. Freezing day and yet there's people using it. So it's a very heavily used park. We have a lot of events there. Um, as you can see, we've got very compacted soils. Again, efficiencies, we don't need to aerate. So, um, and it's a massive source of revenue generation for the park to keep the park going. Um, so, again, we've got this competing demand for brilliant. We need good drainage to keep the events going. But obviously, the water's shedding off in summer events straight into Dulwich Road. So it's creating a, a bit of a problem. Um, it's a protected landscape. They're just going through some lottery heritage funding works at the moment. So we need to be very sympathetic. So the next stage is should funding cut be forthcoming for the soils. Um, it's going to be a lot of engagement with our friends of Brockwell Park and, and others to try and move that forward. The next one, Ruskin Park. Again, it's on a borough boundary of Southwark. Uh, it's just above King's College Hospital and Maudsley Hospitals. Um, here we go, it's part of our CD, one of our CDAs shared with uh, Southwark for Camberwell area. It's a superb possibility for attenuation and diverting flows into the park. Um, we <coughs> know we can protect King's College Hospital. We know King's College was flooded, <coughs> or there was an event in 2004 which affected the A&E department. Um, the railway line, yes, we can protect it, but it's more of a beneficiary issue. Again, it's a park, it's used, kids, blah, 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 what have you. Um, <laughs> dogs. The thing is brilliant, I never realised this. We walked around with, with the park manager and uh, someone mentioned about there's a lot of dog muck about. This was in end of January. And uh, the reason for that is because there was no grass cutting. Because normally in the summer they grass and the grass and it cuts it and spreads it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Um, we, we were looking at this to divert flows and attenuate for, and, and hopefully protect further down in the... Um, the CDA. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really shown any positive benefits apart from protecting um, the hospital. However, on discussions with the very friendly people at Thames Water, see I'm being nice again, <laughs> um, it turns out that the area just to the west of the park, 
greatly affected by flooding. It turns out they've had two events in 97 and 2001. And the modelling, the more detailed modelling we're doing, is now showing that there is actually an issue there. So we've, massive, we've had to refocus over the past three weeks on the scheme. And obviously that's affected our, our submission to EA with our thing. Right, moving on. Next one. This is what I'm trying to do with the guidance we launched today. Is I want to take that and deliver this scheme, the highway sub scheme. We picked two roads in an area called Norwood, and it's that little triangle by the church you can see on the picture. Um, you can see that there's depths of flood in there. We've got historical evidence in the area that there's flood in there, and we're taking this scheme forward. We want it to really, um, people have a go at it, to be honest, really rip it apart. So, so far, we've done these surveys. We're looking at the health and property benefits to take that forward. The free range kids thing is something I've nicked from Sustrans, which is part of one of their livable neighbourhood livable, um, streets thing, theme. The important survey I've done is the parking survey. That is going to benefit me when it comes to consultation and communicating with the residents because this has shown me what is available, what space I've got on the highway to play with. And this is um, something we've already started. This is work being done by Steve Wilson. Um, we're looking at rain gardens, which is what the red build-outs are. So we're looking at full-on rain gardens. The little black line on the corners was me mucking about the other night, trying to extend it and see, you know, we've got to do some tracking. The consultation and community engagement, we will, hopefully I want to build resilience in. But this scheme is not purely about, obviously for my purpose, it's a flood risk authority, it is about removing the flood risk. But the reason I'm getting DIY streets involved through range kids is to um, encourage better use of the street and that it's not just about subs, it's about a safer place for kids to play and the free range kids effectively. This is Odlewy Road. Um, as you can see there's no real frontages on it. Um, but it's a dead space, it's sterile space, no one plays in there, no one uses it. So again, trying to make it a bit of, uh, a bit of fun. Knights Hill Park, this is a groundwater thing. The, in the middle of the picture, where it says Knights Hill Park, that's actually a swale. That was put in by our parks people a, few, a couple of years ago um, because of the groundwater issues. Because what was happening in the top right of the park, those houses, um, were being affected by the groundwater in, when it rained heavily. The water was just shedding into their back gardens, into their kitchens. So the soil was introduced to try and stop that. Unfortunately, uh, it hasn't worked. So we're going to, I want to continue it. We're going to take it forward and, and take it to where it discharges. But I want to make it educational. Now, my feeling is, and this is my thinking, whether this will happen or not, is we've got four schools locally. It would make an excellent uh, mini river. So we put some resurgence points in, some swallow holes, maybe U-shaped valley, some oxbow lakes, and just try and make it a little bit, try and incorporate it and a little bit of amenity, make it a bit of fun, bring the water up on the surface rather than just burying it. Now, Central Hill, this is just a straightforward maintenance scheme. Here we go. On the left-hand side is a footway which is Croydon maintained because obviously on Borough Boundary Roads, we like to keep things nice and simple. Um, <laughs> in that footway, we have, um, or Croydon have put in some ducting to take away some surface water, or groundwater, sorry. Again, that's linked to the Knights Hill Park. On the 85 metre contour, there is groundwater or spring lines. And just back from where the photo's taken at Junction Salters Hill is, um, again, a groundwater issue. But as you can see, there's Nice big footway outside the park and a crossfall into the road because obviously that's what we want to do. Um, I said it's a principal road, so it's heavily used, it's gritted, uh, all those sorts of things. What we did find recently when we lifted it was there's three manhole covers, and we thought there was something to do with Thames, we thought there were side entries. But it turns out that they're actually piped to take the groundwater from further up the hill down to the gully. Rather than put it into the park, we built infrastructure to put it into a gully, because that's what we want to do. 
Um, so what we're doing is we're putting in a grass verge, though yesterday apparently it turns out when lifting some of the slabs there was actually no base or sub-base, it was just put on the clay, so we did have a permeable surface. Um, we're changing the cross full and we're putting it into the park. So we're deliberately draining it into the park. The park's there. It's, it's not as if it hasn't taken that sort of water before. It's a maintenance scheme. There's nothing special about it. It's just straightforward. Easy reinstatement for utilities. This is important. We're using materials which we know the utilities use. So there's going to be none of this argument that it's this special material. It's there. They use it. They've been using this material for years. So we're, we're comfortable with that. It's about changing. I always think a grass verge in a street changes the complexion of a street massively. And it's also, as I said, extends the park into the road. You know, you walk along, there's this concrete path, the hedge, the park, there's this barrier. It's kind of easy into each other. It's public realm, it's public space, it's there. It's what it should be about. So the current situation is both Rockwell and Ruskin, the calculators are with the EA in the assessments, initial assessments, and we're just letting that go through the process. The highway sub scheme, design as you can see has already kind of started, modelling will be happening as well. Um, I want the consultation to start in the summer, we're having a project board meeting next week on where we're going forward and how we're taking that forward. Now I know the DIY streets consultation process, I've been involved in it, so I know where you said about dings was two years in the, in the process, hopefully this will be a lot quicker having what, the, this will be the 13th, I think, the DIY streets. Um, Knights Hill, design and study underway, yeah, it is. And Central Hill, 60% complete. Um, what's next? We've got lots more schemes and studies. People are actually approaching us now. Brilliant. Had Parks actually come down to us and offer us a, a scheme. Um, more green in the grey, which is basically getting rid of these big concrete monolith build outs and just putting some grass in, really, just making it look nicer. More depaving. This is something I know Paul's very. Um, keen about and we're hopefully something positive is going to happen on that in uh, September or maybe earlier depending on the rain. And uh, gorilla gardening. Um, I didn't realise how much gorilla gardening there was going on in Lambeth. There's a hell of a lot but I'm not exactly going to stop it because uh, people enjoy it and it does look nice. Um, that's me done.